Welcome to Johnny Gould's Jewish State. Is Labour anti-Semitic? The most anticipated panorama I can remember. So much so, Labour complained about it before it was transmitted, and before they'd even seen it. Yes, well, that tells you something, doesn't it? Um, But, you know, look, the serious point here, Johnny, is that um, anybody, uh, and most Labour MPs do, know how the BBC system works, knows this is about a scrutinising process that goes from the editing room to uh, the editor to the uh, editorial policy department to the legal department. Everybody has a, at the head of current affairs, they all pour, I mean, hours and hours, we pour over the script, we pour over every word, whatever the Labour Party may (laughs) choose to believe. When the Labour Party say we set out to deliberately mislead, they aren't just talking about me. They're talking about a a lot of people. Uh, uh, Frankly, the logic suggests it's a grand conspiracy. That's, that's, I mean, it's, it's ludicrous. Anticipated all the more so as this episode, focusing on the disciplinary process around the Labour leader's office, dealing with claims of anti-Jewish hate in the party was conducted and presented by a BBC team led by documentary maker John Ware, who collected testimony and evidence from ex-Labour employees and former General Secretary Ian McNichol, seven whistleblowers, three of whom who'd breached NDAs to contribute to the programme. What was transmitted is not everything Panorama collected, and in John's words, there's a sizeable iceberg beneath the surface. With a highly impressive track record of TV exposés, including Channel 4's dispatches in March 2018, in which John asked whether the government were being too hasty, building bridges with Muslim engagement and development, or MEND, over allegations of extremism and racism against Jews and divisiveness in wider society. His notable achievements over the decades reflect the times in which they were made, from filming two Scotland Yard officers setting up an armed robbery in 1984 to Dame Shirley Porter's gerrymandering, the so-called Homes for Votes scandal in 1989. That got her a £30 million surcharge from the district auditor. And in 2014, the exposure of Tower Hamlet's Mayor Lutfur Rahman, his corrupt use of public funds to voluntary organisations, which he hoped would vote for him, subsequently upheld by the auditor's PWC and an election court. So Lutfur got banned from office for a total of five years. He's been derided and opposed, he's been rebutted, but he's also been called the best in the business. Don't believe it? Jeremy Corbyn will tell you. In a parliamentary motion in 2002, then backbencher Corbyn warmly congratulated BBC Panorama and the ever-vigilant investigative journalist John Ware for their perseverance and courage in researching and broadcasting. The motion referred to a programme investigating collusion between British intelligence services and loyalist paramilitaries. After claiming systemic cover-ups and mismanagement inside his own leadership office, Corbyn's rather changed his tune, his office referring to, quotes, deliberate and malicious representations designed to mislead, something which John calls an unprecedented attack by a political party on the BBC. Impartiality is a very, very and I'm serious, very important, uh, critical quality of the BBC people who practice under their flag. It seems everything Labour did in the week since the documentary was aired has been a response to it. A new Labour document and accompanying Corbyn video on anti-Semitism has been released, but its solution to the Israel-Palestine conflict remains problematic. And given the volley of attacks from Corbyn's office, I could only think of one obvious question to open the interview with. I think the first and most obvious question is, how have you been? Uh, Fine, never better. Um, Full of energy, um, relaxed, in the face of a, I would say, unprecedented attack by a political party on the BBC. Um, You know, we're used to attacks from every side. Um, That's because we genuinely are impartial, whatever the Labour Party may say. We do root our journalism in evidence. Uh, This is not just uh, John Ware. This is a whole process, um, particularly with a programme of the sensitivity uh, involving the main opposition. Um, So we're 
confident, uh, relaxed. We'll meet whatever they throw at us robustly. Because the onslaught has been actually a reflection of the sort of mood of the Labour Party which you exposed in the documentary. They've doubled down on their behaviour. I think, you know, when you resort in your criticism to motive, uh, then you're in trouble. Uh, that's always what people gets people into trouble in libel. Uh, it's one thing to say, you know, the programme was biased, uh, I'm an Islamophobe, um, uh, and so on. It, it, it's really another level if you then say, as the Labour Party has, that we, quotes, and I'm quoting them, invented quotes, that we deliberately set out to mislead. Those are, I mean, those sort of allegations don't get any more, any stronger. And um, I, I mean, they're, they're outrageous, actually, <laughs> because they're not true. I, I and, mean, of course, the onslaught began before they'd even seen the documentary. Yes, well, that tells you something, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, but, you know, look, the serious point here, Johnny, is that um, anybody, uh, and most Labour MPs do, know how the BBC system works, knows, as I, as I said earlier, this is not just about John Ware. This is about a scrutinising process that goes from the editing room to uh, the editor to the uh, editorial policy department, to the legal department. Everybody has a, at the head of current affairs, they all pour, I mean, hours and hours, we pour over the script, we pour over every word, whatever the lay party may <laughs> choose to believe. And, um, you know, what goes out is a team effort with everybody's imprimatur on it. So... When the Labour Party say we set out to deliberately mislead, they aren't just talking about me. They're talking about a, a lot of people. Uh, uh, frankly, the logic says, suggests it's a grand conspiracy. That's, that's, I mean, it's, it's ludicrous. So if the party leadership wants to pick a fight, you say you're absolutely ready. So this implies that uh, there's something else for them. Well, I, I was, you know, I was telephoned by the Jewish Chronicle, and um, I, I uh, yes, I did say um, if they want to fight, bring it on. I mean, I, I don't want to sound like some fair ground boxer because uh, that's not really the attitude. It's, uh, and um, but it's true. I mean, look, I, I was, you know, I'm frankly livid at the suggestion that we were motivated by a desire to mislead. It's it makes me very cross. It's just not true. Um, so, look, but the, the, the serious point is, yes, we are ready. And, you know, people need to understand that, that in any program, uh, what you transmit is not, you know, everything you've got by any means. There's a sizable iceberg beneath the surface. Yeah. Investigative journalists like you are skeptics in an age of angry belief. So my question here actually from Stephen Daisley, who wrote a very interesting piece about deplatforming Labour altogether, a really brave journalist, and he has asked this question uh, that I'm going to ask to you. Mm. Do you think documentaries like Is Labour Antisemitic can cut through, or is evidence just in this era of angry belief no longer enough? I think, sadly, there's a lot of truth in that. Uh, people want to believe, believe what they want to believe and, you know, people put on sort of earmuffs, I think. I don't know how you cut through that. It, it, it's become, you know, very difficult. There are so many echo chambers now uh, reinforcing people's prejudices, and we all have them, of course. Uh, I can only speak for myself, which, you know, the, the whole point of journalism is about trying to find out the way things actually are rather than the way you might want them to be. If, if you're the kind of journalist who just shoves out stuff that, you know, reinforces whatever preconceptions you have um, without deference to the ev evidence, then you're, you're a polemicist, you're not a journalist. 
and I know the Labour Party will find that difficult to believe in my case and in this programme's case, but it happens to be the case. That's how we operate. That's how I've always operated. And there's an element of fearlessness about the way you conducted this. I mean, you have experience of putting out very, very chunky, difficult mm. documentaries. Dispatches springs to mind with the uh, uh, inquiry into the um, Muslim community. Mm. What are you expecting in the coming weeks? I, 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 really, I really don't know. If the, if, the, if the 48 pages that the Labour Party submitted in response to my written questions is any guide, frankly not a lot. Um, we're going through their responses line by line. Have done. And um, uh, there's a lot of evasion. Uh, there's a lot of um, addressing the wrong point. There's some addressing the wrong point. There's a bit of what aboutery, uh, which isn't an answer to anything. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm afraid to say that in some cases there are downright untruths. And, um, you know, look, all this will come out of the wash. BBC, the the Labour Party is entirely within their rights to complain to Ofcom, the BBC, if they want to. Um, and. Um, We'll see how it comes out, but I, I make a prediction. Uh, I make a prediction that in six months or whenever it is when this is all washed through, the settled view for, for, for uh, judicious jurists will be that we got it right. Is Jeremy Corbyn an anti-Semite? Well, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I know that a lot of... A fair number of people I've spoken to think he is. Um, some think he isn't. Um, people who have known him for a long time say he isn't. Um, look, I, you know, I don't want to look into his soul, um, and I think it's a really serious allegation. And I don't, you know, I, I, I'd be reluctant to come to a clear conclusion um, without having, you know, talked to him at some length. What I would say is that. Um, I think he has had a pretty insouciant um, uh, attitude to contemporary anti-Semitism. I'm not for one moment suggesting, in his backbench years anyway, mm -hmm. not for one moment. I mean, there's no question, uh, you know, he, he you know, supposed to go in the synagogue. He opposed that, has done. Uh, guy coming down the street in a pair of Doc Martens and Jew baiting, totally opposed to that. Wouldn't dispute that for one moment. You know, he'd be on the barricades with, with you know, you or me or anybody else mm. against that kind of thing. But we're not talking about that kind of anti-Semitism. There's no dispute about that. We're talking about a, we're talking about, um, a more contemporary version of it, as applied particularly to the Israel-Palestine conflict. And I think he has been, I think his associations and... Um, there's no other word for it, really. The, the, the extent to which he has, in some cases, been apologi an apologist for, for some just awful anti-Semites, you know, does raise questions. No one should dismiss the concerns they've expressed about what's been happening in the party, the party that I am proud to lead. Driving anti-Semitism out of the party for good and working with the Jewish community to rebuild trust are vital priorities. I'm sorry for the hurt that's been caused to many Jewish people. We have been too slow in processing disciplinary cases. He abhors the right-wing anti-Semitism, but the left-wing, meh, he can make an excuse for. Well, I, he has done, he has done. Um, he doesn't, so he doesn't now. Um, and, and he can't because of Sajid Javid outlawing Hezbollah, the political wing. Can't yeah. do that so much anymore, can no. he? But, but, but you see, I think, you know, I think the comment he made when he launched the Labour Party's leaflet uh, on anti-Semitism, which isn't a bad leaflet with one or two caveats, and written by, I think, a Jewish member of his office, James Schneider, who I suspect has written most of Jeremy's speeches. Of course, Jeremy signs off on them, but the nuanced exposition of, anti, of contemporary anti-Semitism I don't think has come from Mr. Corbyn's original mouth, originally from his mouth. I think it's come from Schneider's pen. Uh, and I think the fact that Jeremy says 
at the bottom of this leaflet, I've learned so much, is a really, really telling comment. It, to me, it's the only time, I think, actually, we've approached any kind of candor that maybe he's looked in the mirror. And maybe, you know, the, the anti-racist in him, which he manifestly has been, that the anti-racist in him maybe has caused him to look in the mirror and think, you know what, was I a bit too complacent about this? Did I say things that, uh, did I meet and associate with people that I perhaps shouldn't have done? Was I blind to some of the people and impulses that have caused anti-Zionism to cross the line? And my hunch is that he has done that but hasn't quite got round to admitting that he's done that yet in any significant way. You're listening to Johnny Gould's Jewish State. If you like my regular podcasts, please think about making a donation. My podcasts are free, and I want to keep them free, and so donations really help me keep them that way. Head over to my donations page at www.patreon.com slash Johnny Gould. There are some dogmatic messages within that document, though, John. The continued Palestinian right of return, not just for all its people, but also the descendants. I mean, that really is one of the most contentious issues within the Jewish community. The fact that he, with that, supports Hamas and Hezbollah and a second Holocaust. Look, 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 leave aside, you know, his reference to friends in Hamas and Hezbollah, which he's later qualified, as you know, as a sort of he finds as kind of using diplomatic language and I mean I give that a bit of a wide berth um, the, the, I look for the, if we're talking about the, the Schneider document mm. w- which I think got some assistance from, from some very experienced people like Tony Clark and so on um, if we look at that um, I do think for the most part you couldn't argue with it however, however there is one bit where if it's, look, if it's about labour values I think it, it is problematic because it, it says in one breath that the majority, m- many Jews, most Jews, feel very passionately about Israel, and we understand that. Okay, and then it says uh, pretty much in the next sentence, it isn't anti-Semitic to uh, argue for essentially replacing Israel with a single Israeli-Palestinian state, provided, provided, and it's an important caveat, provided this is done, you know. Um, peacefully mm. and with consent. Now, the, the, the that, fact that would never happen, well, I, I, John. I, I, I mean, you, and of course, you, you know, and yeah, I know that yeah. isn't. Uh, it's highly unlikely to ever happen. Yeah, there are some exponents for uh, well, it would uh, be a supporters terrible, of this. Terrible but, war, but, but, it? but yes, <laughs> almost certainly. Basically. But 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 my point is this: it isn't anti-Semitic, in my view, to argue for it with those critical caveats, however fantastical it may be and unrealistic. The point is, the point I'm making is a different one. The fact that the Labour Party under Mr. Corbyn thinks it's okay, because essentially it's saying, look, you know, as far as the Labour Party is concerned, we're kind of neutral about whether it's a one state or it's a two state. Um, now, you know, would the Labour Party say, let's let's take the NHS? Would the Labour Party say, you know, we're kind of neutral about whether the NHS should be privatised or? Or continue to be funded out of, out of public, the public purse. It, we just need it just you know care just as long as care continues to be available at the point free at the point of entry. I mean, the, the Labour Party would never, ever, ever do that, and I don't think the Conservative Party would either. Uh, so you know, I do think positing that proposition tells you quite a lot about a change in Labour values under this administration. I have to tell you, John, I am deeply upset that they still go on about the Palestinian cause within the framework of a two-state solution where all the descendants are allowed to return. And as I say, I mean, I can only think of that being the sort of language of from the rivers to the sea, but sort of written in the sort of English language rather than the sort of flamboyant language. Certainly the maths. Yeah. You know, the maths yeah. uh, inevitably lead uh, in that direction. Of course they do. But I, and I, don't, you know, I don't know whether the Labour Party would um, 
realistically uh, whether that you know whether the, they they in, in the real world see a cap on that right of return as part of an overall deal, the kind of thing that uh, Olmert um, was, mm-hmm. was, was heading towards. I mean, presumably, that would, I mean, they would have to be if they live in the real world. But it is the rhetoric, the isn't it, John, that encourages more anti-Semitism. Well, They're not putting a lid on it. They are continuing to embolden people who don't have that restrained nuance of language because actually the end game of that language is war. It's at this point I'll go back to episode 15 of Johnny Gould's Jewish State, That was with Lynn Julius as we crystallised this specific point. I do believe that the Palestinian ultimate goal is the right of return. As measured by the numbers of UNRWA. In other words, like millions of people. Yeah, millions. But if you take the actual... Which means the potential for another Holocaust. Let's let's tell it, say what it is. Yeah, that that is absolutely Which is what Jeremy Corbyn supports. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Without really realising it. Do you think he doesn't realise it? Uh, Well... I don't think if you put it in those stark terms... But that's what it is, isn't it? Yeah, that's what it amounts to. You know, the Labour Party has not convincingly dealt, so far, reversed anti-Semitism. They have got a figure which is almost impossible to interrogate, uh, a statistic which they claim proves they're making serious progress. They say they're dealing with four times as many cases now as they did before Jenny Formby, the current General Secretary, uh, took office in late March 2018. Now, you know, by reference to what point precisely, um, it could mean lots and lots of things. It could mean that they're, um, they've moved the bar and more and more cases are being um, uh, not proceeded with um, because the, the benchmark has changed and therefore they can say they're getting through in the fight. We just don't know. Uh, and, um, you know, I... I asked them, in fairness to the BBC and to myself, because I don't know, I did ask them, I suggested some estimates to them, and I said, look, if these are wrong, let me know what they are. And they just sort of, they're rather kind of narky, slightly sort of dismissive, sort of under underlay of, frankly, rudeness. They sort of say, these are all wrong, they don't even add up. And they don't actually say, but here are the right figures. Yeah. You know, it's just... Childish, post truth. Well, it's childish, you know. The, it's um, I mean, the, 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 the press operation is uh, frankly inept. The Labour Party. I mean, there used to be a time when, you know, we would fear a call from the Labour Party press office. Um, I, I'm afraid that doesn't happen now um, because it's difficult to take some of their stuff seriously. Mm-hmm. Now, the undoubted hero uh, of your documentary um, is Labour's former head of disputes, Sam Matthews. He seems as ready as you are to take on this bitter fight to the end, although you have a few more years on you than he does. Uh, what advice would you give to him, being now in the cauldron? He is so outed, he's breached his NDA, he's been extremely brave, not just in the documentary, but in articles afterwards. Well, look, Sam's got a big arm wrapped around him, as far as you know, we're all concerned. I think he's a great guy. Um, I, I, I think they're all pretty damn good people actually I, I, I really was impressed with them, they're young most of them in the late 20s, brave you know, brave I mean, it, it, and it, representative it, of the Labour Party and, before and, and 2015 totally representative, um, they understand evidence they're brave um, and they're bright yeah um, the there are more of them let me tell you <laughs> There's more that didn't get into the documentary. Yes. More that you might be using in the future. Well, I don't know I'll be using, but they exist. They're there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel they are sort of reaching out just for sort of box ticking rather than actually admitting to the fact that they have a systemic problem? They're trying to virtue signal their way to more votes rather than actually coming to the conclusion that, yes, under Corbyn, they have created a, uh, a bit of a monster. I, I, I honestly, I honestly don't know. Um, none of them. I mean, you know, I would love to have questioned them about this, um, had a proper conversation. Uh, none of them would submit to questioning. Um, uh, that's what I mean. It, it's impossible to interrogate them because any communication is conducted, you know, by email, by by you know written answers, which are poured over by them and poured over by our lawyers. You know, so it's. BBC lawyers. I mean, it's it's not 
an ideal way to get to the bottom of something. So I don't know. Uh, all, all I do know is that um, the Labour Party's relationship to the truth on some of these issues is not what it should be, has not been what it should be. There has been a, a, a pretty ferocious debate about, a, let me rephrase that, I think there's been a quite a kind of sinewy debate about where the line should be drawn between anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism, and I think it's been pushed further towards where the leadership's office thinks it probably should be than a lot of other people think it should be. It's not, to be fair, to the Labour Party, as if they haven't suspended people. They have. It's not that they're not kicking some anti semites out of the party. They are. But has there been decisive action? Has there been an efficient, determined, focused uh, effort to reverse this? Uh, I don't think there has, actually, no. I think there's been quite a lot of ineptness. The evidence that I'm aware of shows that, says that there's been a significant churn of staff dealing with this. There has been a significant shortage of staff dealing with it. The Labour Party now say that they've doubled the number of staff. Well, fine. The question is, since when? Because my information, certainly as of spring, is that, uh, early, you know, late March, um, early April, is, is that the numbers were below what were needed to really deal with this problem. So, the, so you know, the mystery to me is how have they quadrupled the throughput of cases because if that has happened it's happened in the recent past weeks and, and I remain to be convinced I'm not saying it hasn't I just don't know it's not possible to interrogate them that's the problem